All right, a YouTuber just asked me a question about predators and pests in gardens, compost piles, around your livestock, in your garden. And I'm going to show you what most homesteaders use, or at least what I use, that is surefire way to take care of these problems. If you're getting chickens killed that aren't free ranging, they're in a coop or a run, and you got predators, this will solve that problem. If you got deer eating a garden, it'll solve that problem. If you got deer or other animals eating berries or, or flower plants, it solves that problem. If you got bears getting into your beehives, it'll solve that problem. Like, this is seriously the cheapest way to do it. Well, let me rephrase that. The cheapest way for most homesteaders. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the cheapest way also. Um, which really is because of the solar powered fence energizer sitting up there. Which is what makes it really not the cheapest, but uh, the most convenient. Um, most of the places you're going to need an electric fence probably don't have an electrical outlet right there. And the difference in cost of a uh, fence controller that you plug into an electrical outlet and a solar charger can sometimes be up to $200 difference. So, you know, the electric ones usually cost in the uh, 10 to $75 range and the solar ones cost in about the uh, $100 to $350 range. So, otherwise, let me go over what I've got here. This is what I would call my predator kit. Um, it's easy to carry anywhere. Each one of these posts probably weigh two or three pounds. It's basically a piece of plastic with a metal rod. These are called a step-in post. You basically set them where you want them step them into the ground now you have an electric fence post space these out 10 feet apart or closer you know whatever size you need you can go up to 10 feet apart the next thing you're going to need um, I usually have before I get on to the next topic I usually keep anywhere from about oh I probably own a couple hundred of these but I always try to keep about 10 of them just kind of loose like this in case I need them really quick. Um, ten of these would allow me to do like you know a pretty large area actually. So the next thing you're going to need any farm tractor supply place, tractor supply, Royal King, whatever the equivalent is in your area, they're going to sell these um, spools of electric fence wire. I don't remember how many feet was on this spool, something like 1,500 feet. It's 14 gauge. It's very, very thick and heavy. And I believe it costs around 30 bucks, give or take. The next thing you're going to need is a controller. Now, I use solar controllers, and I just went over why. Pretty much anywhere I'm going to need this setup is not going to be near an electrical outlet. You know, I don't want to have to go run a thousand feet of extension cords, which is a fire hazard in itself. So I'm just going to pay more money and get solar chargers. I actually have about six different ones by two different brands. Um, this one's a Parmac. The other ones I have are, oh crap, I can't remember the name. Uh, it's, the, it's the controller made by Premier One. They sell a lot of like... Um, netting electric net fence electric fence netting and uh, I've got two of their charge controllers and I got three of these um, I always try to keep one spare because this is kind of like my emergency go kit the wire the charger the post I can put up an electric fence anywhere in five or ten minutes so let's say that um, I see a coyote on a trail cam. I probably want to protect my goats. I could easily take and build an electric fence, which the goats are already in an electric fence enclosed area. But I could put a second level of electric fence around 
the goat barn, which gives me like a double layer of electric fence that is certainly going to cause any coyote that jumps the first fence to think twice about going and trying to get goats during kidding season, which is right now where they're easy to carry off because they're so small. The other thing is bears and beehives. We do have bears in Kentucky. If I've got, you know, regular field fence around my garden, I've got it around my orchard, but if bears were in the area, I could easily put an electric fence just, you know, just wide enough to go around the beehives and stop a bear from getting into the beehives. The bears aren't after the honey, by the way. A lot of people think that is what they're after. They're really after the, the bees. They eat the bees for protein. Um, early spring, late fall can be problematic times for bears and beehives. Now, with my garden, I've got a fence. I've gone over this before. I've got regular field fence. And then up against the regular field fence, if I can zoom in here where you can see it, I have... Uh, this is just your normal chicken coop fence. Then I've got it uh, ground staples holding it in the ground so the field fence keeps the larger animals out. This fence keeps out raccoons, possums, ground squirrels, that sort of thing. As long as you don't have a hole anywhere big enough for them to get into, that stops the animals from getting into your garden area. Um, so Anyways, I wanted to thank Boris, I believe is his name, um, for asking me that question because that reminded me to do this video that's actually been on my to-do list for a long time. And trust me, if you're going to be homesteading or you got problems with animals getting into your stuff, this is really a safe and humane solution. Uh, you can energize an electric fence. You can go up as a human and grab it. Now, it's not something you're going to want to do every day, but I often do that to test to make sure that it's working. That's how I initially test it. <laughs> One thing that I did do, I forgot to discuss. Um, this is something optional I added. These are kind of like, think like jumper cables on a car. You can actually buy these for electric fence controllers and make them more portable. It's basically two alligator clips. The red one goes on positive, the green goes on negative, and then they have an eyelet where it connects to your energizer. I got these off of Amazon. They might have been ten or twenty dollars, but well worth it. That way you don't have to jerry rig hooking up your controller in your ground. Um, another thing you're going to need is you can either buy a step-in ground rod they make them in like three foot that's kind of like a t-shaped rod and then when you're done using it you can pull them out but i'll tell you what i do a lot of times i take this ground clip right here let me show you so i take my fence controller and i step it in the ground and then i just take my ground clip and i go right down here where the metal's at make sure wiggle it around make sure it's got a good contact now I'm grounded, right? Anyways, back to testing the fence tester. You're also going to need an electric fence tester. You know, don't be afraid. Just grab a hold of the damn thing. It ain't going to kill you. You know, you're not going to want to hold on to it for very long. <laughs> but it's not going to kill you. So that's how I test them. Uh, maybe that's what gave me cancer. I don't know. Anyways, uh, again, thanks, Boris, for the question. I love it when people interact with me on YouTube. I'm always quick to respond. Uh, no question is a bad question. I want to make that very clear. You can ask me anything on YouTube, and if I don't know the answer, I'll just tell you I don't know. I know a lot of things, but I don't know everything. So, uh, always, you're always welcome to ask questions on my channel. I always reply really quickly, and, you know, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you straight up because i don't know everything but i do know a lot of stuff i've been homesteading now for a long long time um that's about pretty much all i wanted to cover on this so once again thanks boris and uh as always and i can never say this with enough emphasis god bless you god bless your families 
God bless your homesteads. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and if you love this video, share it with your friends.